What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Brutal Planet Comics. I'm your host, Dre DeBrew Daniels, here with some more news. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to be straight up with you. I am upset right now. I am upset. Um, because we're going to be talking about the legendary writer Chuck Dixon and his mistreatment by the mainstream media. Chuck Dixon inspired so many people to write, including myself. I don't become a comic book creator without the legendary Chuck Dixon. He pioneered um, Batman, Nightwing, Punisher as a household name, um, wrote Nightfall, one of the greatest Batman runs of all time. And we're going to talk about what the mainstream media has done to him and how this is so disrespectful on so many levels. So I'm going to get into it a little bit. I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm a bit hyped up right now. So shout out to buying in the comments. We're going to this article. Former DC writer Chuck Dixon explains how being blacklisted from mainstream affects his friendships. This is this is this is going to be heavy. All right, so we're going to go through this. I'm going to stop periodically because I am not I am not pleased. I am not pleased. Batman scribe and Bang creator Chuck Dixon finds himself on the outside looking in these days despite his many years and contributions to DC and mainstream comics. But he has a balanced viewpoint. Of course he does. Regardless of being blacklisted from an industry, he pioneered in his generation. Pioneered is an understatement. He pretty much is 90s, 2000s comics for me. Like, literally. Like, like he's at the top of the list. It, it, it's not even close. Not even freaking close. Okay. Asked about being ostracized by the big two over his political views on an episode of his YouTube series, Ask Chuck Dixon which you should check out, check, check check out his channel. And if he's still in contact with anyone he used to work with, he answered that he'd do lunch with anyone, whether they are a classic liberal or a bomb-throwing communist. Now, what does he mean by this? Basically, he's saying, hey, if we're friends, we're friends. Your political view means nothing to me because we have a friendship, and that shows character. Moving on. Dixon used Eclipse Comics founder and editor Don Mullaney, excuse me, Dean Mullaney, excuse me, as an example of somebody he would still talk to or break bread with, though he doesn't think of Mullaney as a communist per se. He's certainly far on the other side of the political spectrum than I am, but we like each other, Dixon said. Friendship despite political differences. Gee whiz. That means that we can have common ground elsewhere other than who you would vote for or what your stance is on certain things. Unbelievable. And I mean, it makes sense to me. If your friendship is based on just who you would vote for, you're a bad friend. Good Lord. And I hope, I hope people understand. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, oh, you didn't vote this way. So we're not going to be friends anymore. Morons, all of you. Jesus Christ. Okay. I would never stop being anybody's friend based on their ideology, he added, unless, you know, they got really ugly and started talking about setting fires to orphanages. Meaning, if they're a legitimate extremist. Makes sense. Dixon would draw the line there. But views basing friendship on political policy or identification as very weird. I agree. I agree. We're all different. We all have different backgrounds. We all come from different places. We all have different issues. We all have um, different ways of doing things. And to say that if you do it differently than me, we can't be friends is insanity. That said, he continued, he knows he's all kinds of listed in the industry, but it's not entirely for political reasons. Comics have always had a... Oh, no. Clickish nature to them. He explained, and some people didn't want him around anymore, which is still nuts. Dixon, though, rejects the notion he is a victim or canceled because I refuse to be canceled, and part of that is because I refuse to apologize, since he did nothing but speak his mind and openly express his conservative opinions, which is not wrong. I love what he says here. Re Refuse to be canceled because he's just standing up for what he believes in and what he stands for. Makes sense. Stand up for what you, my father used to have an expression said he used to say stand up and be counted and that's what Chuck Dixon did. Great picture of Bane here. Shout outs. 
Furthermore, he says you can only be canceled if you give in to the mob and apologize, which is the prevailing wisdom of those on Dixon's side and in the comics gate community. Anybody offended just loves getting offended, and they must be a lot of fun at Thanksgiving dinner, Dixon said. And he's correct. These people are just looking for reasons to attack somebody and tear somebody down or to ruin their lives are miserable. And all they want to do is bring down chaos and craziness and insanity because they are creatively bankrupt. He's 100% correct. You're looking to be offended. It's madness. As we know, the left doesn't like to leave people alone, whereas the right will, as long as you don't go after kids or destroy any property. The latter is okay more and more with letting freaks flags fly, said Dixon. But the left will destroy you if you don't celebrate or loathe the things they do. If you do not celebrate my nonsense or celebrate any push or cause that I want, you're going to be pretty much exiled. Or if you don't hate the things that I hate, oh, we, you have to be once again exiled. He's making a perfect point here. We're all different people. We all come from different places. We all come from different backgrounds. Why should I celebrate yours? Yeah, that makes sense. Digging deeper, he reveals there are a lot of closet conservatives and apolitical people who work in comics because, surprise, they like to draw or write or create and want to work in peace. Of course. They disagree with co-workers on policy but still go over to their houses for dinner on occasion. So we, so people just pretend, which isn't right. You, sh you shouldn't have to be in a position where you have to pretend to be something or somebody else that you're not. Just so you don't get destroyed. It's madness. And this is the comic industry. This is the industry that I work in. This is the industry that I love. And I, I see it all the time. It's nuts. Once again, great panel. To illustrate his point, Dixon discussed an aspect of his time working at Cross Gen Comics. On average day, certain people's heads will be buried in headphones listening to Rush Limbaugh while they worked. These cross-gen employees were private about their El Rushbo fandom, thinking and scared they'd be fired by their boss and the company founder, Mark Alessi. They were under the impression the late businessman was a screaming liberal. But Dixon laughs off this perception of Alessi and the trepidation that it inspired. He found out years later from socializing with Alessi that he was anything but and probably listen to Rush as well. Still, the paranoia will persist, and it does everywhere in the industry because of job security, Dixon observed. He's right. He's right. People are scared, and that's not right. And I'm so glad that he's, like, because he has the credibility to come out here and say these things. Me, do I have the credibility Chuck Dixon have? God, no, but I believe exactly the same thing. People are scared and hiding because they don't want to be have their lives destroyed. I don't even blame them. Once again, great bang. Many people go along to keep their jobs and will virtue signal to remain relevant. It's so bad that some Dixon knew to be apolitical became bomb throwing pinkos. What? I, I, don't, I don't know what that means. On social media to be or seem down with the struggle. However, when he talks to them, he can tell they're not and their politics were learned. He also adds they don't want to be singled out and so march along in a low and a fear Dixon could never stoop to. For one, he speaks his mind and has done so for years. Doing a 180 to fit in after all these years would never work barring a stroke or brain trauma that might cause him to vote Biden. <laughs> okay, that's funny. That's funny. You got me there. You got me there. How Dixon can be friends with people like that in today's social climate is he tries to understand where they come from. The people that I remain friends with, that I don't agree with, he says, I understand perfectly why they feel the way they feel, and I hope they feel the same for me. What a mature dignified man Chuck Dixon is. In summation, this man right here has character, 
class and decency and refuses to bend the knee to the crazy mob just because of how he thinks and feels and what he truly believes. And the fact of the matter is that he is still willing to have an olive branch out for people that would otherwise treat him badly shows how great of a character this man is. And he deserves a round of applause. Yep. Yep. He does. Because the working in this industry, like I have for many years, and him, of course, decades, it can be very, very frustrating, especially when you're just trying to have fun and tell your stories. And the fact that he is blacklisted is an abomination. So good on you, Chuck Dixon. Good on you, my friend. Keep it up, keep it rolling, and keep on writing cool stuff. So what do you guys think about this arc? I know I ran pretty pretty long this time because I'm, I'm just really, really, really passionate about this about chuck dixon how do you feel about the things chuck dixon said do you agree um do you think there's do you have a view like him that you know has balance and stuff like that let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to like comment subscribe when you subscribe don't forget to hit the little bell alert and share the video as always you guys have been awesome i'll catch you all next time also if you want to support my channel uh, check out spinwiz.com or download the spinwiz app and check out my comic series trouble it was written with a lot of love, and it was definitely my favorite comic series to write. I've also written it in English and in Spanish, so whatever floats your boat, I got it for you. Thanks again, and check it out.